Rogers Arena in downtown Vancouver is the venue for the third meeting of the season of the Calgary Flames and Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks lead the season series two to nothing. Canucks finishing up a five game homestand here tonight after being gracious hosts for Roberto Luongo's homecoming on Thursday night. Panthers won that game 3 1 and then moved on to Calgary to beat the Flames in a race to 11 last night. Yanni Ordio gets the start and goal for the Flames tonight. It is Eddie Lack for the Vancouver Canucks, his second start in three games. The men who call the game tonight Gary Galley and Dave Randorf. Dave. Thanks a lot, Scott. Hi, everybody. So both of these teams coming off losses, both to the Florida Panthers, and both admitting they were a little flat and perhaps maybe took the Panthers a little lightly. I don't expect the same thing to happen tonight. <laughs> well, I mean, the Roberto Luongo story, when he comes into town, that kind of sucked up all the energy, I think, out of the Vancouver Canucks just watching that. And then the shooter at the OK Corral in Calgary as the Florida Panthers score six. So both coaches aren't extremely pleased with the way their team played against the Florida Panthers. Give the Panthers some credit. But look to some adjustments tonight from both teams. They try to tighten up a little bit. What are the key adjustments that quickly on both sides, do you think, Al? Well, I think the number one thing for the Vancouver Canucks, and Willie Desjardins had talked about it, is you got to play with this game with energy. And they looked like they didn't have any, especially in the third period when their power play just fired blanks on three consecutive power plays, just including a five on three. For the Calgary Flames, tighten up defensively. Six goals, way too many. For the anthem downstairs at ice level, here is Mark Donnelly. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise, remove your hats, and join Mark Donnelly in the singing of O Canada. Well, the playoffs are still too far off into the distance, and this is the point of the season where the long grind sets in and challenges teams to pick up the valuable points available, like the two up for grabs tonight, a divisional matchup between Calgary and Vancouver. The starting hit miners for the Calgary Flames, 23-year-old Yoni Ortio, who last started last season. He was at Adirondack earlier this week. It was called up with the injury to Kare Ramo, and he gets his first start of the season. Down at the other end, Eddie Lack, who picked up his first home win of the season earlier this week, is 3-0 against the Calgary Flames. Ryan Miller will back him up, but he is not 100% as the Vancouver Canucks really have a flu bug running around their locker room right now. The referees tonight are Mike Lego and Tom Powell, Don Henderson and Lonnie Cameron will work the lines at Rogers Arena. Glad to have you with us, Dave Brandar, Gary Galley and Scott Oak for the third of four meetings between Vancouver and Calgary. The Vancouver Canucks have won nine straight against Calgary and eight in a row here in this building, Gary. Well, they've had their number for sure. The one thing that Calgary does possess is a very strong record in the Pacific Division, 10-3-1, and, and they're starting a five-game road trip, and they're going to hit all Pacific teams. And right away, that puck goes up and out of play, so they will drop the puck at center ice again. If you look at Willie Desjardins, who the last time he met Calgary, both these teams came in on a lengthy losing streak, so they are 5-2-1 since beating Calgary on December 20th. Well, he's done a heck of a job here. I think the reload that they did here with Trevor Linden 
started with Willie Desjardins and I think the players love playing for him and I think the one thing you're seeing that is in the Sedins and Alex Zedler especially. Alex Zedler being leaned upon in the absence of Ben Hanus who is skating again. He's been out with a groin tear injury. They hope to have him back sooner than later. Puck comes up to center right. Tanev goes across to Edler. Tanev also singled out by Desjardins as a guy who's really stepped up along that back end. Calgary with the puck to center. Here's David Jones. Jones in, tries to cut it in the middle. And the puck bounced off his stick. Johnny Goudreau in behind him. Goudreau just named the all-star festivities where he will take place in the rookie skills competition. What a tear he's been on of late. Ortio out of his own net to stop the puck up. He's a native of Turku, Finland. Faced the Canucks late last season. March 8th allowed two goals on 14 shots in a Vancouver win. Turn back for Chris Russell. Russell across to Dennis Wyman over to Russell. And the Flames start out where it's tipped into the Vancouver zone. There is Eddie Lack. Lack comes out of his net and quickly moves it to Stanton. Stanton headbands to Higgins and it rolls away from him. Lance Boma. Cuts in and steps in on the line. And moves around Brad Richardson. Lost control of the puck. Jack Cassian into the middle. And the Canucks try to break out. Joe Colburn is up there along with Marcus Granlin, who was told earlier this week that he was being sent down, but with an injury to Josh Juris up front, he got to stay. In fact, he never actually officially checked out of his hotel room. Bob Hartley this morning chatting with him, and he said it in jest, of course. He said the game against Florida was like a shootout at the OK Corral. He said it was like a saloon door. He felt his defense, his goaltending was swinging open and shut constantly, and they've allowed 11 goals against the Panthers in the two games they played against him. So he just said he took the videotape of that game. He chucked it in the garbage. There's no sense looking at it. Just get rid of it. Get ready to start the game tonight. And we'll see how they do. Calgary things up at their end. Sorry, Gary. Calgary scored first in that game and had the lead three different times. And they come into this one out a three-game losing streak after having won four in a row. And Lack will cover up in front of his own net. I think that one of the things they tried to do was give Jonas Hiller a bit of a break, and Kerry Ramo was supposed to get some games. He got a bit of a virus, an infection, so he missed a couple of games. And then in his first game back, he comes out to play this puck and collides with the knee of Rafael Diaz, and that shook him up, and he left that game. And Jonas Hiller, who was supposed to be getting the rest, had to come in and not only finish that game, but then play the game against Florida as well, and he did not look very good in that game, so I think a rest is needed tonight, and that's why we'll see it Ortiel. As the Calgary Flames start a five-game road trip, all inside the Pacific Division. Crucial stretch of games for Calgary. There's Hoodler. Throws it out in front, and nobody was home, but it's kept into the line by Giordano. Into the All-Star team today, his first time going to the All-Star weekend. Why not? Top scoring defenseman in the NHL is approached by Sedin, who goes across to Daniel. Henrik and Daniel in front for Burl. Swats at it with a backhand. And Ortiel forced to make his first stop of the night. Alex Burl's back to the city, Gary. Yeah, he's uh, played with them before. He knows exactly what to do. And he's one of those guys that will go to the net. Here's BX with a wrist shot into traffic. Knocked out in front, and the puck picked up in behind the goal. Brody hammered by Hanson, drives the puck loose. Horvat tries to go to the front of the goal, and this is Michael Backlund settling things down for the Calgary Flames. Backlund turns it over at center right. The extra. Long pass, tipped in on Ordeo, and he will hang on for the faceoff to his left. Well, smart play to hang on to that as Hanson throws a thunderous body check here on Brody. Brody's the guy who plays a lot of minutes, had a couple of goals the other night. He lays the shoulder in him. Good, solid, clean check. And you mentioned the fact Burles is joining the Sedins, and I think it's Willie Desjardins who's trying to spread out some of the offensive play by getting Verbata onto the second line with Higgins and Benino. And with Higgins with the flu, he hasn't had a chance to see him yet. Handler with a blast, blocked by Boma. There's Verbata out there now on that second line for the Canucks that really needs some offensive punch, and they're hoping for about a 16 goals will do just what you said. And here he is with a puck. 
Rogers. He's also going to his first NHL All-Star game. Try to chip it ahead for Bowling, who's back into the lineup after a healthy scratch last night. Russell pokes it around the boards. Met by Higgins, back to Adler. His trick shot up high on Orteo, and he snares that. Bob Hartley was oozing when we talked. He talked about Boma this morning. So many things that he does for this hockey team, and here's one of them right here. He goes out and sacrifices himself to block that shot, and it stung for sure as he was slow getting up and getting off. And they don't have to look pretty when you block them, but when you go down, you got to make sure you get it, and he did that exactly. Told us earlier today that over the last 10 games, he's been their best player. He gets in on the four check, he's a big body. The other team knows when he's on the ice, and that's Bob Hartley's kind of player. He wants the other team to know that you're out there and being a pain in their side. Six hits last night and three assists. Lucas Sabiza with a drive that goes sailing over the glove there of Portillo. Here's Sean Mathias, down low in the corner, trying to work away from Matt Stajan. And eventually he lost control of the puck to Brody. Outlet pass and near side now for Paul Byron. Cassius on the back check. They'll reset to the back end. There is Frankie Corrado, the 21-year-old on his third call-up of the season. And finally he gets into his first game of the season. And that is offside of the Vancouver Blue Line. Three times a charm for him, and there's a look at who may be at the end of the day if he can continue what he has been going on through the first half the Norris Trophy winner, and uh, certainly when you look at point production-wise, he's right up there. Some guys have caught up to him. This guy had 30 points in his first 30 games. He had points in 24 of his first 30. He's cooled off a bit, but still averaging a point, a half a point a game down the last 12 games. He's been a rock for the Calgary Flames, and not just as a player, but as a leader. He's their captain, comes to play every night. A lot of his points, the majority of them, in fact, have come on the road. Fantastic season for the captain. Now in his second season wearing the C for Calgary. He sets the pace for everything back there. When you look at the play of Russell and Brody and Weidman, like I said, you got a guy like him playing for you and leading the way. Everyone else follows in place. And that defense core has really, they've restructured it. They play very good in their end. They're very patient, very poised. Hendrick drops it off for Daniel. Daniel skates past Kudrow, puts it in front there for Burroughs. And that is covered up by Yoni Ortio. 24 hours on the road, as John Candy and Steve Martin will tell you, planes, trains, and automobiles. And this guy, Ortio, did all of it. He, he's just coming up and taking over for some of the injured guys and getting an opportunity to step in and play right away. And you can't, you can't imagine how he feels to get this opportunity after what he went through. There is no direct flight from Glen Falls, New York to Calgary, Alberta. So it was planes, trains, and automobiles for him on Thursday. And he arrived in time to back up last night. His bags didn't. <laughs> the best part was Hartley says, did you get any sleep? He said, no, not, I didn't get any sleep at all. He says, did you get some sleep this afternoon? No. Here's a chance for Jones back in, in front, back in, chops at it, and Lack couldn't corral it. It's in the net, and Calgary has opened the scoring to make it 1-0 Flames. He missed 29 games with an abdominal surgery. He played with some pain through the start of the season, just couldn't get through it. They went ahead and did it. He missed all this time. Since he's come back, Bob Hartley has been so impressed with Backlund. A turnover, sloppy play in the neutral zone by the Vancouver Canucks. And here they come, straight to the net. Straight lines, north-south. And what a great little play here. Gaudreau comes in, pauses, gets it right over to Jones and a good backhand pass right into the wheelhouse of Backlund. All he had to do was steer it towards the net. You mentioned Eddie Lack couldn't get a handle of it. He's got three goals in his three games since he's been back. Great reset for Michael Backlund, who had a career year last year for the Calgary Flames. His fourth from Jones and Goudreau. And Calgary has opened the scoring, and the play is whistled down at the Calgary blue line. When you're in that tight, you're not picking spots. You're just trying to get it off as quickly as you can and get it up into the air. Elevate the puck. You know that Lack is going to be taking away the down low play, and that puck just gets up enough to clip the arm or glove of Lack and then go over the top and into the net. Good try by Lack, but couldn't get her all sealed off, and the Calgary Flames, good road start for them, one nothing lead. Scored first, as we mentioned last night. 
see if this helps them tonight against their divisional rival. Team they've really struggled against. And it's sent back into the Canucks zone. Visa checks over both shoulders as Joe Colburn was bearing in on him, but he got the puck around to Corrado. Corrado's hammered there. Colburn is everywhere on this ship. And now here's Brad Richardson. Stops up behind his own net. Gets the pass away. Hanson banks it up. Catches Cassian on the move. Cassian can't cut around Diaz. And he skates around Stinson as well. Good strong drive by Zach Cassian. Himself recently just back into the lineup after a broken finger injury. Edler towards the net. Bouncing puck. Cassian bats at it out of midair and he swatted it wide. Here's Richardson again. Has Hanson in front. They throw it there. And Orgio was not sure where it was. Comes to the line. Kept there by Edler. Edler moves it across. Tanev. Back to Alex Edler. Into the corner here. Good shift by the Canucks. Hanson one-timer did not get all of it. And now Orgio dives on that loose puck and covers up to hang on. Face off coming up inside the Calgary Blue Line, and the Flames have a 1 0 lead on the goal by Michael Backlund on Hockey Night in Ten. Well, the All Star selections announced this afternoon by the NHL created no surprise for the Flames, but a bit of one for the Canucks. Mark Giordano is the pick of many to win the Norris Trophy at the halfway point of the season, will represent the Flames, and Johnny Goudreau is a no-brainer to be one of six rookies in the skills competition. Radham Verbata is the Canuck representative, and few would suggest he's unworthy, but it's a touch surprising that Daniel and Henrik Sedin, who lead the Canucks with 36, 35 points each, uh, weren't named. But here's my simplistic theory. The league has room for one player from each team. They couldn't separate the Sedin, so they took Verbata. And at 34 years of age, the Sedins will not be unhappy with the rest they'll get during the All-Star break, Dave. Strong theory, actually, Scott. I think it probably like has it. some credence to it. Who would dare split the city up? Henrik into the corner, chops at it. Giordano lost his stick. And now it comes free almost there for Burroughs. This line reunited this week. And look out, here's a chance. Swift in front there, trying to get it to Daniel, but it's broken up by the captain and sent down the ice. Edler goes across to Chris Tanev. Higgins, or rather, Yannick Hansen tried to step in over the line, and he was stripped of the puck, and the Flames come back the other way. Here's a high shot there from Stajan up on the slot, and he whistled that one wide. The exit out to the line, and that is not going to come out. Calgary back with it. Bowling skates around the jet, tries to center it, and can't. And it's put back into the corner for the exit. Evan BX, a long flip pass over the head there of Derek Dorsett. And back into the Vancouver zone where this is picked up by Stanton. Ryan Stanton has scored a goal this week. His first goal in 83 games on Tuesday against the Islanders. Here's Goudreau stepping in. Watched by BX, up back in his support. And it comes to the boards where it's scooped up by Verbata. Right on Verbata into Nick Bonino. Now the boards and that hops over the stick of Corrado and down the ice and this will be icing against the Calgary Flames. Well don't miss Schitt's Creek, the hilarious new comedy starring Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara premieres this Tuesday on 9 at CBC. Over well, Vada, and you can say what you want. I mean, he leads the team in goals, power play goals, shots on net. I mean, he's a great down low player, and I think that's the reason why Willie's moved him off that Sedin line and put him on this line with Benino and Higgins, and he's getting to kind of look at it as Higgins missed the last game with the flu because he can help this line, whereas the Sedins, they don't need a third guy to help them cycle the puck. They just need somebody to go to the net and play with a little edge, and that's Burroughs. There's a quick shot and a good stop there by Ortio off of Brad Richardson. It was a sloppy part of their game the other night. Vancouver was their face-offs. And again here, it's a scramble draw, but they get to this puck. And that was something they weren't doing the other night against Florida. Their wingers are coming in now. They located the puck. And this is a pretty good look at Orchio. And that's a pretty good save by him. And he doesn't bleed any rebounds. To the line. Edler to Tanev. His drive just misses. 
Chris Tanev, who scored in overtime in this building on December 20th, the last time the Flames and the Canucks met. Correct me if I'm wrong, but pucks are not supposed to sit on the backs of these nets. They're supposed to be strung tight enough that these pucks roll off. That's two that have sat flat on the back of that net and have not come off. To me, that's way too much slack. You should not be losing and getting whistles for a puck sitting on there. That puck should be coming right off the back of that net, and it should be in play. Shouldn't have face-offs like that. And the face-off comes outside the line as a result as Corrado hammers that in on the blocker of Ortiz. Shots are 8-1 in favor of Vancouver, but it's 1-0 Calgary. Here's Bravado with a drive, and he snapped that one wide on the stick side of Ortiz. Calgary scored on his first shot last night as well against the Florida Panthers. Backlund has the only goal, his fourth. Nearing the midway point of this first period, Higgins bounced off the puck, and the puck comes outside the line. Lyndon Bay has scratched tonight for Vancouver. He was supposed to be a scratch a couple of times this week, but that flu bug kept him in the lineup. But Chris Higgins back in there tonight. Here's Stanton now, trying to race away from Colburn. Ryan Stanton in there, shoots, and Ortiz makes the stop on the Canucks defenseman. That's the 10th shot on net for the Vancouver Canucks, and over the last six games, believe it or not, and one of the reasons why they maybe haven't been as solid as they have been in the past, they've only averaged 21 shots a game. They've almost got half of that already, 10 minutes into the first period. So I'm sure Willie Desjardins has told them, pucks to the net, pucks to the net, pucks to the net, turnover in the neutral zone, Stanton with a pretty good look. Henrik Sedin, who has two goals and seven assists in his last eight, in to take this draw, and he wins it against Stajan, and they pull it all the way down the ice to center. Burroughs flips it in there. There's Daniel giving chase. Out of the reach of Henry comes up the board. Burroughs puts it back towards the net. Knocked down by T.J. Brody. Brody keeps that puck in. Moves it across. Glencross snaps the shot. Rebound and both of them are blocked. Here's Glencross again. In behind the Canuck goal. Curtis Glencross has that puck taken away by BX up. Into the middle for Henrik. Henrik Sedin with Burroughs. Drop pass, that one missed, and it's dropped out of the flame zone. Here's Sean Monahan now, 12 games without a goal. Sends it out in front for Hoodler, and that was in too tight on his stick. Now Derek England with a drive, and that's picked up by Lack. Rafael Diaz, briefly a Vancouver cutout. Lost control of it, and chipped in now by Dorson. He's got a hallback. Charging up with him, Horvat in the corner, and Dorsett. Flames put it off the boards, and this is going to be held there by Edler. Out of the corner now is Yannick Hansen being watched by Englund. Tries his right, and then his left, and goes back and forth, still with it. Hansen dancing around and trying to feed him to the five points, and Tanev has to go back and get it. Dangerous back pass there by Tanev, and here comes Kucho in there, all the way around the net, still with it, centers it out in front, just out of the reach of Backlund. Off that turnover that ended up on the Calder Trophy nominee, Johnny Goudreau. He's got some stiff composition in Nashville with Forsberg, who's having a great year himself, but that's exactly what Johnny Goudreau could do for you. Flips it over, almost got the return fee there from Backlund. He's great in tight places. Around the net, he does everything at a high speed. He's got one of those really sharp hockey IQs. And a great set of hands to go with it. The other competition would be a, would be a guy that both these teams faced recently. That's Aaron Ekblad of the Florida Panthers. To say quietly, how he's not quietly having a good year. Florida's having a great run under Gerard Gallant. And Ekblad, I think, is getting some great coaching from a guy who does a good job with young players. Goudreau's got the puck again, and he's got Russell joining the rush. Snaps it in there. Lack makes the stop. They clear it down the ice, but back in position to break up the chance. There was Colburn. Quickly turned back to Granlin. His wrist shot high over the Canuck goal. Here's Lucas Pisa. Takes the hit, makes the play. The boards are rattling here right now. And we have a stoppage in play as the puck goes into the Canucks bench. Lance Bowman, the former Vancouver Giant, lay the body on Nick Benito and up and over.
Well, as mentioned a few days ago, Yoni Ortio was playing for the Adirondack Flames. How do you get there to Calgary? Well, here's how, Gary. Well, he got recalled and, of course, had to drive the 52 kilometers, made his way to Chicago, unfortunately, with weather. A nine-hour wait, flight got canceled, had to take him to Toronto, spent the night there, and then caught a flight from Toronto to Calgary, and that's how you didn't get any sleep. But he's awake tonight and live and well as he's had a number of good opportunities thrown his way. He's had 10 shots already in this period, and he's looked pretty sharp for the Flames. 17 wins in the American League that is tied for second most. He has also been named to the AHL All-Star festivities later this month. Not sure whether or not he'll be able to attend that, depending on the length of the injury to Kari Ramo, who Bob Hartley told us today expects it to be a short-term situation. Adler keeps the puck in. Here is Verbata. Into the corner he goes, Chris Higgins spins away, he's got Bonino in front, and Ortio down, and he's got the puck. You see more and more players trying this as Higgins is taking off behind the net before he gets too far behind, and with the net, kind of the depth of the nets have been shortened a few inches, he's gonna come back against the grain right here, and Bonino waits for him on his forehand, and then tries to short side Ortio. Good play here by Higgins to wait, Benino finds the open place on the ice, but Ortiz will have none of that as he gets his body in front of it and he scrambles and covers up the rebound. Another face-off win for the Canucks. The Flames have really struggled in the face-off circle this season. And another stop by Ortiz. Well, the one thing, when you look at a bit of the streakiness of the Calgary Flames, they got off to that unbelievable start and run 16-8-2 to start it all off. And then, of course, they had that seven-game hiccup where they really had struggled to score goals and 11 goals in the seven games, and that's not going to win you very much. They lost eight straight, seven straight in regulation. And now they're currently on a three-game losing streak entering play tonight, as that is offside at the Vancouver Blue Line. But you got to look at a, a month ago, these two teams were at the top of the Western Conference. Vancouver was, was tied for first place in the West with Anaheim. Calgary was one point out of first place in the West. And that was on the 3rd of December. So, you know, you fast forward a month and Vancouver's dropped to fifth and I got little, you know, hiccups here and there. And of course, the seven game losing streak for Calgary has dropped them to ninth. So they're out of the wild card spot even at this point. Dorsey throws that puck across the ice where it's picked up by Giorgetto. Goes across to his partner Brody. Pass into the middle off the shin pass there of Kevin Bieksa. Here's Monahan now. All this talk about the rookie Johnny Goudreau. You forget that Sean Monahan is still the youngest member of the Calgary Flames. He's hit a dry spell. The scores are streaky and... You know, Bob Hartley convincing the kid, listen, don't change your game and then try to be all defensive and shut down the opponent. You're here to produce and score goals. You're a goal scorer. Stay on that. Don't change. Hanson with a puck along the left wing boards. Took a look at his backhand. Doubles it into the back there of Richardson. Into the middle of Mathias. Quick wrist shot. And Ortiz up to the challenge there. 12 shots for the Canucks. 12-3, so they're down by one. Goudreau trying to chip that puck loose and rips it down the ice. Joe Colborn in on the four check against Stanton. Got it away to the Exa. Flames are gonna keep this in. Battling for it down low is Marcus Granlin. Granlin battling for the puck and it's taken by the Canucks. Flipped it in the middle and behind Cassian and he'll go in after Chris Russell who moves that puck out. Here's Weidman now. Weidman winds and shoots, and that's wide of the mark. And it's Weidman who has 10 goals in the season, but he's been sitting on 10 for a while. Here's Matthias, wrist shot across the goal mount. Kept in by Spisa. And behind the net is Cassie in front of work away from Colburn and lost his footing. Spins back, puts it out in front, and Boma is there to break that up for Calgary. Good collapse there by Boma, recognizing that there were some loose players in front. You drop down into that collapse, get your stick in the lane, and he turns it over. That stage, you know, has two goals last night in the loss against Florida. He's got that puck now, and he'll reset at the back end with Giordano and Brody.
Here's Giordano now on his back end. Can't knock it past Curls, who comes up that left wing board, puts it out in front. And Brody calmly moves it out to Glencross, and it's out to center and beyond. Here's Byron trying to step around Edler, angles him off. And out of the corner, they go to Monahan. Monahan turns and shoots it. That got in behind Lack and out the other side. Up high now, Giordano. Trying to get it to Hoodler, and the Flames have to clear the zone on the delayed upside. He might have glanced off that post behind Eddie Lack. He fooled me because I thought he was dropping that puck into the slot. And he turned around and fired it instead. And goal scorers put pucks to the net. Here's Corvada, chops at it, and Orcio will hang on for the faceoff. Sean Monahan, no goals in his last 12 games, but he comes close right there. However, it's one nothing still for the Calgary Flames. Eddie Lack is one of the most likable players to come along in a long time, which makes him a perfect target for pranks. Tuesday, turn 27. Thought he was lining up for a team picture, and he got, Ready? wait for it here, a bucket of water over his head. Bo Horvat doing the honors. Can't think of a lot of goaltenders that have a temperament to see that sort of thing funny, but Lack did. Next night, went out and beat the Islanders, redeeming himself for a terrible loss. He took it in New York's hands last March, and he's got a shot tonight at his second win in as many starts, but the Canucks will have to play from behind, Dave. Yeah, that was on his birthday. Happy birthday, Eddie Lack, whose numbers actually are excellent. Pretty good in a small sample size against the Calgary Flames. 3-0, Gary. The 9-3-5 save percentage, 1-6-4 goals against. Just can't imagine dumping that bucket of water on Ronnie Hextall. <laughs> Just don't know how that would have turned out, but uh, <laughs> you know what? A really good personality, and a guy, the, the team really, one of those glue guys that holds a team together, and you mentioned his numbers. I mean, that's all good, you know, good and done. I mean, he's a backup for Ryan, you know, Ryan Miller. I mean, he's their number one guy. He's gonna play a lot of games, and it's tough for a guy to step in and play a small, amount of games and play well. Here's Bonino now, steps on that loose puck and wings it off for the iron short side. He had Orteo beat. Puck was loose for Bonino and he almost tied the game. Bonino who's been struggling to score after a great start. He had seven goals in his first 14 games of the season and he's stuck on nine right now. There's quite a few guys in Vancouver who are struggling to score. You look at Burroughs, you look at you know, a guy like Hansen who had the scoring pretty good and Higgins. There's a number of guys that have had trouble putting the puck in the net is going to get a hand pass here and have a look at Benino. And then when you're not scoring, you're always an inch on the wrong side. And, and you know, if it hit, the puck hits the post at another angle, it probably goes posting in. But right here, he catches the upper top outside of the post. I think good position by Orcio. Look what you're looking at. You're not looking at much. And he dropped that just a tad too early that allowed that puck to get up there, but you know, there's just not much to look at there for Benino. Good try though. 22 goals for him last season. He scored a series winning goal in overtime against Dallas in game six for Anaheim last season as well. And he's a good player, oh, a real yeah. good player. You know, you're losing Ryan Kessler and you're losing some size and grit there for sure, but I think the Anaheim Ducks were not happy in losing Nick Benino. Absolutely not. Bruce Boudreaux said as much. He said he used to put him on in all kinds of key situations because he would just find a way. Hard part if you're really Desjardins is how do you split up your number one line that's got 100 points combined? Hanson now trying to get away from the pressure of Gradlin. Drops it off of the Canucks cycling around. Here's Bo Horvat to Dorset. Try to step out in front. Out of the corner he goes. Horvat is right to the doorstep, and Orcio has got it. Well, don't miss Shit's Creek, the hilarious new comedy starring Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara premieres this Tuesday at 9 on CBC. And now we got Dorset, who is going to square off against Lance Boma just before they drop the puck. And Dorset takes Boma to the ice. Eric Dorsett, who now is in nine fights that will tie for the league lead in that category. Well, giving up about 20 pounds and a few inches on this fight, and this was a play that was at the net, and then afterwards when they got up, Dorsett kind of bumps into Boma, and uh, as he's not going to back away from this, and again, the two combatants are willing, and 
You know, we talked to Bob Harley this morning, and he went over the fact that it's tough to have a guy like Brian McGrath, and it's tough to have some of these guys in your lineup that you love those guys, but there's just no room for them. The game has gotten so quick, and in such a short period of time, maybe a year and a half, that these guys are no longer, you need four lines in order to keep up the speed and tenacity of the game. And the fights like you've seen right there with Dorset and Bama, those are gonna be the ones you're gonna see more of, which I think the fans don't mind seeing those ones where they're just in the structure of the game, the fabric of the game, they happen. And uh, good tussle between two tough guys. Two tough guys who can skate. Well, and to your point. Yeah, I mean, you gotta keep up to the speed of the game and you gotta be able to go on the ice four lines against four lines and compete. You know, you look at Colt Norris in Toronto and, and here with Brian McGratton, and it's not that you don't love those guys, you do, they're great guys. You love them on your team, but the game has changed dr dramatically in the past year and a half. Gary Hoodler puts that back to the line. Cordano snapshot in on Lack, and he got that right pad down just in time. Quick outlet up to Daniel. Daniel at center ice gives it to Henry. Henrik Sedin to Daniel, back towards the net. Orteo watches that go wide. Into the final minute now of this first period. Michael Backman has the game's only goal for Calgary. As the Flames scored in their first shot on net. Penalty call coming up as Orteo was knocked over behind his goal by Brad Richardson. Here's back on those spot. Kutro shoots, and that was blocked in front of the Vancouver netminder. And with 22 seconds to go, an interference call is made on Richardson. He's not too happy. Sometimes the goalie goes out and plays the puck and then keeps going. Sometimes they go out and play it, and they come back to the way they started from. He plays it and comes back. And when he backs up, part of that is to block out Richardson. He is being a pick. He knows that, and he also knows that you can't run into him. So as Richardson jams the brakes on, look at the embellishment there by Urzio. Hands up in the air, legs flailing out, and that's why Richardson got up and had a talk with him as he was heading to the bench. But nonetheless, a power play for the Calgary Flames. In the late stages of this first period, a power play that is far better for Calgary on the road. Here's Giordano, takes a look, still with it, snaps it towards it, and Lack makes the stop, and Backlund Battles for that loose puck. Into the corner for Goudreau. Final seconds now as this one's sent outside and the Calgary Flames will have a minute 39 of power play time when the second period starts up. Shots are 15 to six in favor of the Vancouver Canucks, but it is Michael Backlund's goal that has the Calgary Flames up by one. Coming up at the intermission inside the game with George, Nick, Kelly, and Elliott, you're watching Hockey Night in Canada. Back at Rogers Arena in Vancouver to start the second period with the Flames in front of the Canucks 1-0 with Canucks head coach Willie Desjardins. Willie, your team was out hit 16-4 in the first period. Was that addressed in the intermission? Yeah, a little bit. I think we put lots of shots up, though. Like, we've had a lot of possession of the puck, so that might be why there's a little bit of discrepancy there. If the basic tenet of the game is... Uh, traffic you know take the goaltender's eyes away do you need more of that in the second period yeah probably we had lots of shots i, I think we had some puck possession but we got to get a little bit better thank you willie appreciate your time okay thanks Hawk. dave and gary now with the call of the second period thanks god as we are getting set to begin the second period which will begin with a minute 39 still remaining in the goaltender interference call against brad richardson lance boma still in the box for that fight that he had with Derek dorsett as well well, Willie DeJarnay, I mean, he's right. I mean, 16 to 4 of the hits. Certainly, you don't look at the Vancouver Canucks as an overly physical hockey club, but they did possess the puck a lot. They put a lot of rubber at Ortio, uh, who was up to the challenge. So, yeah, you, you would see that. The numbers might be skewed a bit. Jordana moves this across in for Backlund. Back and forth for Goudreau. And that chance just bounced off of his stick. Here's Jordana back towards the net. Good stop by Lack on the redirect in front of Calgary. Starts hot with a man advantage. Here's Wyman. Gets the puck to sit down. Moves across to Giordano. Took a look over at Wyman. Sends it in towards the net. Jones bangs at it. And Lack reaches out to cover up. Well, there's only been one goal tonight. It came on the stick of Michael Backlund on a nice little three-way pass play with Goudreau and Jones. And he was the recipient just by driving to the net and getting his stick in the right position. And he got a chance to bury it. And it's his third goal in as many games since he's returned in the lineup for the Calgary Flames. 
Good start in this power play for Calgary in the beginning of the second period. Vancouver's penalty killing third overall in the league. They've allowed just three power play goals in their last 15 games. Weidman moves it across. Mark Giordano now tries to step up, and he throws it back towards Weidman. And some miscommunication there as they have to go back and get it. Calgary's power play is decent. It's better on the road than it is at home, but they have not scored a lot. Two for the last 20. So they've got to get things picked up here if they want to climb back in this playoff race. The power play can be huge for you, get some big goals. One for five last night against the Panthers. Visa steps up there for the Canucks. Here's Nick Bonino. And taking that puck away is John Monahan up the right wing boards. Monahan to center and steps in on the line and then sets up. Into the skates there of Daniel Sedin, banks it off the board to his brother. And Henrik looking around at center ice. Back to Daniel. Why shoots, hits the post. Inches away from a short-handed goal. Daniel Sedin rings it off the iron. Brody down. Forced by Henrik and Yuri Hoodler has it now. Three shots on that Calgary power play, which is now over. And one shot off the post for the Canucks. Stays 1-0. Oh, Byron rattles the board there against Provada. The hits were 16 to 4 after 20 minutes in favor of the Flames. Here's Byron. Takes a shot. Lack makes the initial stop. Puck stays alive. And Edler corrals the puck for his net miner, and he will hold on for the faceoff. What the Sedins do so well is they'll draw attention to the puck carrier, and then what they'll do is once they get all that attention drawn to them, coming in, look up the lane. Here he comes, full speed. He waits till he hits the blue line, right on the tape. He gets a chance to unload this. There's three Calgary Flames back, but nobody picks him up coming down the ice, and he gets some really good rip into that and catches the crossbar. And we've had, I think this is the third post we've seen hit tonight. Four shorthanded goals this season for Vancouver. They came close to their fifth there. It's always about the late guy. The late guy is the one that seems to be missed more often than not. Came through a ton of traffic. He came from the far blue line, and by the time it gets to your blue line, you hit your blue line, you think somebody will have picked him up, but not there. Here's Stager off the boards. In towards the net. Sprawling there is Richardson. And picking that out of the pile is Paul Byron. Byron try to go into the corner for Stager, and it comes back out to center. Brody's pass attempt just gets to bowling, and now a two-and-one chance there, but Stajan was caught by everybody else. Here's Brody in a traffic and lack pounces on that loose puck right in front of his own net. Nominate your community at khv2015.ca by February 8th for your chance to be the next Kraft Hockey Bill. Brought to you by Philadelphia Cream Cheese. Calgary Flames get so much offense generated from their backside. You look at the uh, three defensemen between Brody, Weidman, and Giordano, you got 28 goals right there. And as they cross the blue line, oftentimes they're looking for the back defenseman coming up into the play. They create a lot of action off those point shots. Nick Bonito tries to step in, and that is broken up. Calgary has a total of 108 points, Gary, from their defense. That is top to the NHL compared to 54 points for the Canucks which is 28th in that category. Now, one thing Calgary has done is they've generated a lot from their blue line. Top angle drive there by Higgins. And then it's picked up by Monaghan. Monaghan hit a post in the first period. Visa takes the hit, keeps the puck moving around the edge, and it's scooped up by Henrik. Into the middle of the ice for Verbata. Provada, high slot, snaps it, and it's off a stick and up and out of play. And the faceoff stays inside the blue line. Well, Verbata talked to Scott Oak in the intermission, and he gives a lot of credit to the Sedin brothers, and why wouldn't you? I mean, uh, he's right. Either one of them could have been selected, but at the end of the day, for a guy who's put in some real great consistency when he was in Arizona and here so far in Vancouver, uh, I think a nice uh, opportunity for him to play in his first All-Star game and have that to put on his resume when it's all said and done with. So congratulations to Radom Verbata. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you don't take them lightly. You know, I you know I played in a couple of them, and it's a chance to play with the best of your peers and, and to and to rub elbows with guys, uh, the star players from all the different teams and and divisions that you play within, and guys that you know, and guys that you're going to meet for the first time. And it's an exciting time. And I know for guys who play in a lot of them, I didn't play in a lot of them, but for guys that do, they'd rather take the time off. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the two that I played in in Chicago and New York. And there's the 100 points this line has put together. And it, it seems a hard thing to do to break them up. But, you know, Willie Desjardins has a plan. And who can argue with him? He's done a pretty good job so far here for the Vancouver Canucks. Well, as you pointed out, it's it's the obvious thing. They're trying to spread some offense out. Do you, do you not agree with that notion? You know, I, I, I think when you got a line that's going good, I mean, whoever plays the Sedins, you, you know they're going to generate some offense, but I, I hate to break up something that's not broken. I mean, that line isn't broken. Here's Burroughs now with a wraparound, almost tucked it in as Orteo comes across to that near post with the left pad to shut the door. Great extension by Orteo. Goaltenders nowadays, they can get one leg on one post and one skate all the way on the other, and it's a credit to their stretching and what they do with their mobility. And look at that as he comes across, he gets it tight on the post, and a good job by Burroughs who comes screaming in. And I mentioned earlier, they've taken some of the depth off the nets this year, where they've cut about four inches from the backside, and you can turn that net a lot quicker. Horvat in to take this attacking zone faceoff against Stajan. The Calgary Flames won just 33% of the draws in the first period. And this one is held there by Spiza. Into the corner he goes. Weidman's got some time to look around and make the pass out to center right. Back inside the Calgary blue line. Here's Chris Russell. Has the puck taken away by Hanson. Dorset now on it. Into the corner, Horvath's right in front, and he passed just in his skates, couldn't get him on his stick. Byron now turns that puck over to Dorset. He's rubbed out there by Stajan. Stajan with his 12th career multi-goal game last night, and he needed it. Here's a loose puck, lines and fires off the post. That was Yannick Hansen, speaking of guys who could use a goal right now, and what is that, four posts? That's the fourth one, and it, it all started with a turnover in the neutral zone by Byron. Instead of chipping it off the wall, he tries a backhand stab through the middle of the ice that gets turned over, and once that gets turned over, everything just goes the wrong way, and I think you're gonna have a bad break right here as this puck's gonna go off the referee's skate, and as it goes to get cleared out, it catches the tip of the stick of Dorset, and it goes right onto the forehand of Jansen, sitting right in the slot, and he got everything and then some on that shot, and all we got was iron. Had a hat trick near the end of November against Chicago, and since then he has been cold. Just one goal in his last 17 games. Here come the Canucks, two on two, and over the line. It's John Mathias. He shoots, and Orio kicks that one out. Into the corner, Cassian has it taken away by Granlin. Up to Lance Boma. Colburn now flips it into the corner. Stanton goes in there against Boma, who leans into him. Puck comes up the boards, then on the backhand by Mathias. Good cross ice speed for BXA. Canucks change after they get the puck into the Calgary zone. Eric England picking his way out. Goes to Rafael Diaz and it's sent in. Here's Edmund. Outlets to Henrik right in front of his own net. Daniel now with it. Back to Henrik. And that's poked back inside the Canucks blue line. This is icing against the Canucks. Well, Rick goes on a new reckless adventure in an all-new Rick Mercer report. That's Tuesday at 8 on CBC. The Vancouver Canucks will play at home tonight, and then they're off on the road as well. They got a five-gamer coming up. Starting in Nashville, and then they'll catch some East Coast teams and then finish up with a couple of the teams in Florida. Starts on Tuesday, five games and eight nights for the Canucks. Here's another chance. Daniel's going to wind it to the same spot, but Giordano got his stick in the lane, and the puck is up and out of play. We still only have one goal on the board. The Canucks trailing 1-0. You're watching Hockey Nights in Canada. Willie Desjardins' spirits were lifted a bit this week when he learned Dan Hamhuis' return is imminent. Desjardins is not expecting to have him back. 
until late February as a result of that torn groin. So Hamus being expected to play in the Canucks upcoming road trip. It's a pleasant surprise. Torres groin November 20th. Surgery was considered, but Hamus opted for rehab under the direction of Rick Celebrini, who's worked with Steve Nash for a dozen years. Torn groins can take a long time, but Celebrini's technique and his program have Ham Hughes uh, almost ready to play seven weeks later. Dave. Missing his 20th consecutive game tonight. The Canucks are 10, 7, and 2 without him, Scott. Thank you. And with a wrist shot in the traffic, loose for Higgins. Higgins couldn't fire, couldn't find a lane to shoot. And it comes back to Adler. In for Chris Higgins. Back towards the net, and it's tipped just wide. Burroughs is on it. Lost to handle and it's put up the boards. Again, held by Edler. Back in it goes. Up to Glenn Cross. And now the Flames are away. Brody with Monahan. They go back and forth. Here's Brody. Shoots one that's steered aside by Eddie Lack. Nick Bonino sweeps it across to Tanev on the fly. And Tanev steps in. Sharp angle shot handled easily there by Yoni Ortiel. Good draw. Pokes that free. Off the boards. And that is going to be scooped up there by David Jones. And look out. Here's Goudreau trying to get away from Spiza as he saw a loose puck and was on it. Still up there. Forcing Spiza to skate it away, which he does. Off the center now. Right on Verbata. Near side for Henrik. Henrik stopped looking up for some help. And it's tipped back to center right. Corrado. His last NHL game was the last game of the regular season back in April, and it was in his building against the Calgary Flames. Scored a goal in that game, his only NHL goal so far. Here's Bieksa. Right under the tape of Fofato, who's forced back. Look out. He's got Granlin watching him. Good forecheck here by the Flames, forcing the Canucks. Make something happen here, which they do. That's off the skate again of Graylin. Turned back by Colburn, who sent it in. Sees up. To Daniel, into the center right area for Radom Bobata. Bobata back out there with the Sedins. Here's Derek England now, starting up from his own end. Up the center. Tipped in there by Staten, not deep, and sent back down by the Canucks. Rafael Diaz just throws this one down the ice, and this is going to go waved off as Black comes out of his net to handle it. Holding on his backhand to Stajan. Stajan gets away from the check of Richardson, and it's Doug Free under the high slot. But in support there, the Canucks tip it out, and it's sent right back in. Calgary's four check has been unbelievable this period. They are on top of the puck. I mean, you know one thing, they're coming and they're finishing their checks. Here's Diaz now, puts it in towards the net, bouncing all over the place. Foley got a shot and Lack makes the save. And that puck never sat down cleanly, but the Flames did get an opportunity out of it. Brendan Bowley's done 52 games without a goal. Game close to that chance right there, here's Richardson. Richardson out there on the forecheck for the Canucks up from behind the net is Mathias who turns and shoots. Goes into the corner where it's picked up by Hansen. Eric Hansen now in a post earlier tonight. Drops it off for Tanev. Back and forth. Tanev with a quick shot. Stopped by Ortiel. Out from behind the net there is Richardson trying to turn and spin it in front. And Ortiel met him there at the near post. Eric Englund first to the puck, sweeps it up the boards and gets it out as the Flames need a change here. Here's Horvath, not knocked out with a high stick. Horvath tries to walk out, gets some help there from Edler, teed up for Cassian, and he blasts that one into a crowd, and it's blocked. Now we're the number one shot blocking team in the NHL. Again, waved off and it's picked up by Vancouver. At the midway point, shots are 21 10 here in the second period. Hansen stepped in, wrist shot off a stick and up and out of play. 
When you're struggling to find goals, that puck just won't sit down for you, but Boley got it on net, and his team leads by one. They are considered to be a goaltender's best friend. And to the shooter, it's not even considered to be a shot on net when you hit them. But they have been the friends tonight of both goaltenders as we've had four posts clank off the iron tonight. Some goalies will rub them after like Marc-Andre Fleury, and some of them just ignore it like it never happened. But the sounds of that is music to the ears of the goaltender. Off the post, off the crossbar, and out of play, and not a goal, and they'll take it every time. You know, in lacrosse, that counts as a shot on net. <laughs> it does. Do you think it should be? I don't think it, it really matters. It, it sure it does. Well, does it matter? If it's shot on net or not, didn't go in. I only care if it goes in. That's true. I'll give you that. Shots are 21 to 10, and the Calgary Flames are winning one nothing. So do shots really matter? I don't know. Alex Burroughs tries to dig that puck free. He's been put back on that second line now. Russell with a shot into traffic. And that is blocked. And Bonino just can't get it out. Kept in there by Chris Russell. In behind the net, Goudreau lost the handle. Jones back to the line. Quick shot. Again blocked. Edler pins Goudreau. Picked up by Backlund. Sharply back to Russell. Tipped and stopped by Eddie Lack. Good reaction save there. Goudreau forced back. Boy, he is shifty. Steps in over the line. Manages to get that puck deep and head to the bench for a change. He's tied up just a little bit by Burroughs on his way to the bench. A home booth there on the blue line. No matter of two feet, two square feet, he went through three people. And that's what I mentioned. In small spaces, he is so shifty. A couple of teams now are starting to get to realize how important he is and what a kind of a game changer he is. And Ferentz took a run at him in the Edmonton game. And that's who nailed him. Here's for batter. Wrist shot. Stopped by Ocho. The rebound did not reach the net. Now Daniel. Try to feed it back to the line. He was had his stick tied up, and Monahan took it away. Dennis Weidman. Weidman bouncing puck, and it rolls just wide of the net. Back out in front. There's Monahan. Here's Hoodler. Sharp angle drive up and over the shoulder there of Black. Back into play. Yuri Hitler having another excellent season for the Flames. 20th in NHL scoring, entering tonight. You bet. And this is icing against the Canucks. What a nice little tip here and right in the middle of the ice. Oftentimes defensemen, if they don't have a lane to shoot to the net, and here Russell is a great job of looking off to the side here. You can see his head turn. He's aiming for the outside of the stick of Jones, and all he does is slant the stick slightly, and that changes the direction of it, and a pretty good save for Eddie Lack as the Vancouver Canucks will take their time out here as on the icing call, they've got some tuckered out players, and in a one nothing hockey game, no sense in taking that chance as Willie Desjardins will take his time out. As I was mentioning, you were mentioning Yuri Hoodler, and great player he's been for the Calgary Flames. He had it was a healthy scratch of the night against his old team, the Detroit Red Wings, as he was on the ice ready to start the game, and his wife went into labor, he had to leave. And uh, they welcomed into the world their daughter Anna, his wife Hannah and himself. And a pretty exciting time for him and of course his teammate, Miroslav Schmid, who had a set of twins. He's one of those consistent, steady players. He just puts up decent numbers. He's an easy player to play with, get to know as a line mate and consistently finds a way to produce. He had no points last night against the Panthers, but Gary, since October 23rd, he has not gone more than one game without a point. And eight assists in six consecutive games. I mean, he's been, like I said, one of those guys who consistently puts up decent numbers, and players love playing with him. Vancouver steps in on the line, three on two, but that Aaron pass in behind for Bada, and he puts it into the corner where it's met by Brody. Brody to Giordano. Giordano going to the All-Star game. Many thought that certainly DJ Brody could have been in the conversation as well. He'll get there. Here's Zach Cassian now. Gathering speed to the neutral zone. Cassian lost the handle to England. And it comes out to center for Goudreau. It's right back out of the ice. Into the middle, bouncing puck, gets it back to Goudreau, spins it back for Diaz. He shoots it, that's off a of skate and wide of the net. 
Paul Byron. Out of the corner, on his back end. Up high, throws it across. Derek England's wrist shot, tipped by Bowling in a lot. Again, makes the stop. Kevin Bieksa. Pressure there by the big body of Brandon Bowling. Cassian, hit by Diaz. And now it's Richardson. Well, you're right, Calgary's been on loose pucks here this second period, Gary. Time and space and finish with a purpose, and that's the Calgary Flames since the start of this game. In on the puck hard, finish every check. That's how you get back to playing your best hockey. England gets a little help there from Bowling, but they've given the puck up to the Canucks, and it's quickly moved back up for Horvath. Hanson now up high. Going to step away from the long reach of Colborn. Gets it down deep for Horvath. And his backhand had a roll off of his stick, and at center is Granlin. He saw Boma on his right. And that was intercepted, and now the Canucks have it again. Edler quickly up to Bull Horvat. Drops it off for Hansen. High slot. Hansen shoots. Odia makes the stop. Loose puck is cleared as Hansen had a great look at the net. And he's got the puck again. Back towards the goal. Up high. Knocked down. England brings it around the boards. Down the ice. And this is going to be icing against the Calgary Flames. Nice stretch pass by the Vancouver Canucks. And it's the net drive that allows Jansen to cut into the middle and get this great A-quality scoring chance. Here's the long pass on the change by the Flames. Out wide and then drive to the net. And that creates this opportunity. If Paul Horvat doesn't drive to the net, Yannick Hansen never gets that chance. He walks right in and what a save by Ortiel. Yoni Orcio had four wins and four losses last season for the Calgary Flames. What a big here tonight on the road and the start of this five crucial five game road trip for Calgary. Well, Rick goes on a new reckless adventure in an all new Rick Mercer report Tuesday at 8 right here on CBC. He's just glad he's not on a bus, a train, or a car, or a plane. He's just glad to be in between the net. Doesn't care how many shots he's getting. 24 as he approached the five minute mark left in this second period. Calgary draft pick 171st overall back in the 09 draft. Alex Edler now. Bouncing puck for Rapata. Got it to sit down. Try to get it behind the goal for Henrik. Henrik into the corner for Daniel. Here's Henrik Sedin back for Daniel. Quick tip and a great stop by Orgio. Here's Henrik Daniel again. Orgio gets up. Scores! Waved off. Orgio got a piece. And now it is immediately waved off as it was knocked in, ruled, knocked in with a high stick. We'll have a look at this, and you're seeing the Sedin brothers at their best in this last 15 seconds as they put on a clinic of give and go hockey down low. And Mike Lego is going to wave this thing off, and the call on the ice is going to be a high stick, so there'll have to be evidence that it wasn't. We'll take a break and we'll have the verdict for you when we come back to Rogers Arena on Hockey Night in Canada. Follow the bouncing puck and watch as Sedin puts his stick in and he clips it. It's well above the crossbar. It is a high stick. The referee points to the net for the goal. And then he looks up and he says high stick. So he calls it a goal, and then he calls it a high stick. And I'm not sure what order it went in. At one point, he was waving something off as well. But this is not a goal for sure. He touches it. My question is, if he would have just left it, if, if Henrik just left that puck, it may have landed on him and went in. Loose puck in front, and on the back end, there was Higgins. That's a drive that goes whistling just wide off the stick of Tannehill. So it stays 1-0. The lone goal scored by Michael Backlund. Just over four minutes remaining here in the second period. Burroughs into the corner. Taps it back to Benino. Try a one-time wrist shot. And Hitler sends it back in there. Higgins, who's very briefly a member of the Calgary Flames in his career. Came over to the Calgary Flames in a trade that sends, among other players, the other way, Brandon Trust. Here comes Tanev, winding it up out of his own zone, up to center. 
Steps it over the line and then puts it in there. Weidman meets it in the far corner. And this one goes down the ice right back to Chris Tennant. Over to Ryan Stanton. And that is icing against the Canucks as Stanton wasn't at center ice. Let's take it back downstairs and bring Scott Oak back in. Dave, in our Budweiser red light scoreboard earlier, Pittsburgh over Montreal, Crosby with the OT winner, Ottawa 5-1 over Arizona. The Jets jumped out to a 3-0 lead in Los Angeles, and now late second, it's 3-2, and the Red Hot Rangers lead San Jose 2-0 with the second period just about done there. Red Hot, to put it mildly. Now, Vigneault, the former Vancouver Canuck coach, has really got that Ranger team rolling in through California as well. Henrik Lundqvist has been unbelievable. And Rick Nash has found that scoring touch again. He's been on fire. Here the Canucks need some scoring touch. Down a goal. Here's Goudreau back the other way. Johnny Goudreau with a wrist shot. That is off the stick of Stanton and up and out of play. Tonight is Johnny Goudreau's 42nd game. And he's already surpassed all the games that he played last season. He played 40 at Boston College, one in the NHL, and eight at the World Championship. So he's surpassed his regular season total, but he is soon going to surpass his entire total of last season. And I guess the only question to becomes, he's not the biggest guy, is how is he going to stand up to a full NHL season, Gary? Because so far, so good. He's really picked up steam. Here's Weidman now. Knocks that puck down, gets it to Colburn. And it's banked off the boards to Boma. Boma in traffic, supported by Granlin. He goes to the net in front, and a penalty call made here. It's coincidental minors being handed out. Both guys are going. Bieksa. Along with Glenn Cross, is it? Some four-on-four four hockey no, here Granlin. as Kevin BX is going to go to the box with Granlund, and Bob Hartley's not happy about it, but he's holding BX's stick as they're going to the net, and BX, you'll see Granlund right there. There's one call right there, and then reaching across as BX is looking at him, and what, you know, what do you want me to do? So he gets the call for having his stick there when he's saying Granlund's holding it there. The argument goes both ways. They'll both go to the box, and this will more than benefit the Calgary Flames, maybe, who lead the National Hockey League and four on four goals with nine. The exit for the hook, Braylon for the holding of the stick, and it is four on four with 2.40 to go here in the second period. Monahan sends it in, Lapp will stop it up for Alex Edler. What a turnaround this season for Edler. League worst, minus 39 last year. Plus five this year, playing big minutes in the absence of Ham Houston, doing a great job at it as well. The ice opens up, a player from each team comes off. There's just more room to move. Often time you'll see the coaches put on their more creative players, their better skaters, more productive players, and look at the Calgary Flames. And that's incredible. Nine four-on-four -four goals, and you look at the teams that are with them and have some explosive players of their own. Just a lot more ice to protect, and that's when your D jump up and make unnumbered situations. You gotta really have your head on a swivel. Oftentimes, the D are responsible for the other team's forwards, and vice versa, so it's more of a man-on-man -man coverage. Let's see what the Canucks can do, and whether or not somebody can jump off ten. I didn't like what he saw, and he circles back in behind his own net. Here he comes again. Ten straight up the ice. He'll drop it off. Henrik Sedin steps in and leaves it for Spiza. Spiza to the corner, in for Henrik. Henrik back to Daniel Sedin. Daniel goes back to the line, goes back and forth with Frankie Corrado. Here's Henrik. Took a look at the net, now spins back, being watched by Goudreau. Daniel Sedin off the boards to Henrik. He's got some time and space back there. Banks it up the net to himself, trying to boot it out in front to Daniel. And too many flames in front of the net. They broke it up. Good throw to Brody. And Brody snapped that one just wide. Quickly up to Henrik City. He's stepping in. Here's Henrik. Drops it off for Daniel. Backhand shoots. Rebound. And it's knocked down by Orgio into the high slot and cleared. 
Final minute out, second period. Goudreau steps in, gets to his backhand, and Tanev erased that opportunity. Lack thought of covering it up, but keeps the play moving. The minute you join in, P.J. Brody joined in in the one end and had a great scoring chance, and that opened up one the other way by the Sedins. Backlund straight out of the box. His wrist shot handled by Eddie Lack, and he will hang on to that one. And that's exactly what happens when you when you extend yourself and you jump in to make an offense, and that's what you want. You want to join the rush as a defenseman and get a good opportunity, but once that doesn't work out and that puck squirts loose, you got to start getting back the other way because you know the Sedins are going the other way, and here they come, and I thought maybe they got a little too cute on this one where they should have attacked the net right away, and a soft backhand was no problem for Ortio. Vancouver's got 27 shots on that. We've got the scoring chances at 17 to seven in favor of the Canucks. But it is one nothing for the Calgary Flames. Hanson, Richardson shoots and Ortio square to the shooter, makes that stop as well. It is 27th of the night so far as we approach the last 30 seconds here of the second period. And the one thing I've liked about him tonight is his tracking of the puck and how square he is. There you look at him follow, he leans out towards the top of that blue paint on the ice. Get out in the crease, he makes himself look big. And there's not a lot of moving parts, very economical. He's got it all in the right places. He lets the puck hit him, he absorbs it. He hasn't given up a lot of rebounds. And I can see why he is definitely ticketed anyway to go to the AHL All-Star game. For Batum, here to take this draw against Monaghan and wins that one cleanly. Sent around the boards, back to the blue line. Richardson couldn't get a hold of it, and it's knocked back down into the Vancouver end. Stanton, with Hoodler watching him, final seconds up to Verbata. Puck rolls into the Calgary zone, and time is going to run out here. And we are exactly where we were after 20 minutes. Backlund's goal is still standing up, one nothing as both goalies are taking turns making stops and get a little help from their friends around them. George Stromalopoulos coming up at the intermission with former Flames great Joe Neuendijk watching his Flames with a 1-0 lead tonight on Hockey Night in Canada. Calgary Flames trying to snap a three-game losing streak and they lead the Vancouver Canucks 1-0 with 20 minutes of regulation time to go here at Rogers Arena with Bob Hartley. Bob, your team's been hard on the puck and finishing its checks safe to say you're happy with the way the flames have been playing tonight yes we are like uh you know, we came out and we wanted to be on puck we wanted you know, like to play good defensively now in the third period let's put more pucks in the blue paint thank you bob appreciate your time thank you scotty dave thanks scott so this one looks nothing like the Canucks six five or rather the flames six five lost last night on home ice They've not won in this building since December 23rd, 2011. That is eight straight losses for the Flames in Vancouver. They are perfect 10-0 when leading after two, Gary, and we are underway here with Michael Backlund's goal, the only one of the game so far. Mark Jordano up from behind his own net, walks out, and then snaps a long pass right under the tape of Yuri Hoodler. Spins and fires it in there. Lack slows it up behind the goal. Here's Glenn Cross. Monaghan now tries to feed it out in front. Hoodler's got it, chops at it, and Tanev puts it up the right wing boards for Verbata. Back to Edler. Edler in traffic, kept in there by Henrik Sedin. Up top for Daniel, bounced off his stick, and BX is on it. He keeps it deep. Met by Giordano, turns it over to Daniel. Daniel in behind the net, got Verbata parked out in front. In the corner is Henrik Sedin, give it a bump there by Monaghan, walks into the corner. BX with a drive and a blocker stop by Yoni Ortio. Who is becoming a big part of the story here tonight. Wholesale changes both benches as BX winds it up from his own end, drops it off for Pearl. Steps around his set, takes a shot and it's deflected up and over the Calgary goal. Well, he started the season in Adirondack, and his first five games were not oil paintings by any means down in Adirondack, but he really picked it up after that, and he's had a really great season. He steps in today under some circumstances, some tough travel, but boy, he's looked sharp. And I mentioned earlier how square he's been to the puck. He's got the puck out of harm's way. He's got a little bit of help from the goalpost. He's drawn a penalty. He's done pretty much everything, as he's almost faced 30 shots here in this game already. 
At center ice, it's Jones. Jones gives it up to Goudreau. He got in a heavy track, traffic, and it's stripped to the puck. And now it's Benito. Wide side to Burroughs. Out of his skates up to on his stick. High slot leads it for Higgins, who overskated the puck. And now here's Backlund at center. Pushes it ahead to Goudreau. Goudreau in there, still with it. Shoots. Black makes the save. Big rebound out in front for Russell. Back towards the net and pushed out. Here's a chance for Higgins to break away. One on one. Higgins trying to cut in. And it rolls in on Ortio, who covers up. Willie Desjardins, as we come off this Higgins chance, has put Burroughs back with Benino. We'll see if that is a consistent thing, and we'll see where Vavada comes out as Higgins tries to come inside on Weidman. Good job by Weidman not to be staring down at the puck. Stayed right in the position, got in the way, and blocked it all out. And with the lack of offense so far, and a Louis Desjardins may decide to put Verbata back with the Sedin and see if he can create some offense. Face off pulled into the corner. Jordana tried to go up the board, then it puts to the open side here where Colborne is on it. No Colborne. Out of the corner and pinned there by Spiza. Matthias is there as well. And the battle ensues. It's pulled out there by Colborne, but it is knocked away from him and down the ice. I shouldn't say a lack of offense, just a lack of production. They've thrown 50 attempts at Ortio. So they've had a number of pucks that have gone there. They just haven't been able to bury one. They've had a couple of bad breaks and a high stick goal. We heard Bob Hartley. He wants to see just more offense at the net. He doesn't want to sit on a one goal lead. We've got Vancouver 18 scoring chances so far tonight. Here's Bowling. Turns and gets that puck in there, but it is whistled down to the Vancouver blue line. Well, don't miss the Book of Negroes, the epic six-part miniseries starring Lou Gossett Jr., Cuba Gooding Jr., and Ojanu Ellis. That continues Wednesday at 9 right here on CBC. Vancouver had a couple of shifts where the Sedins kind of got their mojo going and a couple of good give-and-goes out of the corners, but... They have not been able to solve Yoni Urzio so far. Well, if nothing else, I mean, he's he's been solid tonight, but he's also, as you pointed out, giving Jonas Hiller a much-needed break. He's been struggling of late, and he needed somebody to step in and give him a night off. By the looks of things. You know, and you're always a little bit sharper when a guy comes up from the minors and gets a chance to play. You, you know, you recognize he's a young guy going in the net. He hasn't had a lot of experience in the National Hockey League. And sometimes you just play a little harder. As we have a look at the general manager of the Calgary Flames, Brad Treeliving. He's got to be thrilled with the way Yoni Ocho is playing. Calgary entered the night two points out of a wild card spot. They just went three and three in their six-game homestand. Heading it out of the road now. And Orgio scoops that one up and he'll hold on for the faceoff inside his own blue line. I'm not sure if Dennis Weidman thinks that this puck was shot at him by Stanton on purpose. I think he's just telling him, like, wake up, buddy. You got the whole ice to dump the puck in on, and you crack it off my ankle here. Right there, as he looks to dump the puck in, he turns at the last minute and he rips it right off the ankle of Dennis Weidman. And I don't think for one second he was aiming at his ankle, but for Dennis Weidman, he's like, hey, buddy, there's a lot of room here. You don't need to crack me off the ankle. And I think that's what he was saying to him. Spoken like a fellow defense, but that's, oh, that's a pet peeve of yours. I've that taken, come up before. I, I have taken some pucks, one off the ear one night, and uh, I was so upset, it was like on a dumping. Well, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Sharply moves out to Hanson, Hanson to Dorset, and Horvath's up there. Horvath with the puck, pushes it ahead. And the Flames back up to center right. Get back to Hanson, who quickly turns in there and gathers speed. Hanson with a wrist shot of that wide stick side. Here's Edler now. Edler can't beat it towards the end. Back of the line, Horvath with a rocket in a traffic, and Orgio forced to make a stop there with all kinds of bodies in front of him. Frankie Corrado over to his partner and his move near side now for Henrik Sedin. Over for Daniel. 
Daniel backs it off the inboards, right under the tape there of Henry, back to Daniel. Up top, Corrado with a blast. Ocho to stop with a rebound into the corner. And up and out of play. A good shot by Frank, Frankie Corona as he walks right into this one-timer and lays into it, and the Flames didn't get to block this one, and I'm not sure Sedin as he runs into Orgio. As this young gentleman here was called up on three different occasions and never got a chance to step up to the plate and get his, his game in at the National Hockey League level, and he gets called up today, and with the Vancouver Canucks coming off that loss to Florida, Desjardins felt like it was the right time to bring Frankie Corrado in, and he comes in tonight. He hasn't played a lot, but it's a pretty healthy-looking shot to the net there. Got into 15 games last season, and of course, the year before, he got in late in the season and in the four playoff games against the San Jose Sharks. In towards the net, knocked down by Brody, back into the corner. Monahan takes it free, but Daniels on it behind the net. Daniel Sedin. And that is off the stick of Rabada. The Flames just get it outside, but Glencross mishandled it. And he gets a little help now from Sean Monaghan. Monaghan near side for Hoodler. Hoodler backhands it towards the net. Rolling puck. Swept aside. Hoodler's got it. Flames get this cycle game going or try to. Henley call is made against the Canucks. It's going to be Lucas Biza going into the box for the hook. Lucas Pisa had a rough night the other night. Not so much a night, just a rough shift as he had a bit of a brain cramp on a line change that ended up being a breakaway for the Florida Panthers and a goal as he exited the ice. And right here in a one goal game, he gets called for the hook and will head to the box with 15-16 left. And this would be a huge opportunity for the Calgary Flames to double their lead and put the Vancouver Canucks on their heels if they could find a way to get their power play going. They've had some good movement in the puck. Second power play opportunity for them on the night. They have three shots in their first chance. Here's Michael Backlund. Back in there for Goudreau. Tanev along the end boards, bagging away at it. It comes free for Jones momentarily. Trying to get it to Johnny Goudreau, and the Canuck penalty killers put this with the length of the ice. It's all about the exits. Get the puck out of your zone when you can. You want to have your opponent spend as much of their power play time trying to bring it up ice, not in your end. That one bounces past Dennis Wyman racing after it was Richardson, but Giordano won the race. Quickly turned back by Backlund. Johnny Goudreau across. Here's Giordano. Lowe's fires right on. Lock makes the stop. A puck is still lying in front of the net. Richardson can't fight it. And it's over on the near side boards. Backlund battling for it. Goudreau comes away with it. Up high. Johnny Goudreau lost the handle on his stick. Has to head back to the bank for the Canucks race away shorthanded. The extra to Higgins. Drops it across. And that shot off the stick there. Matthias was redirected and wide of the net. I think that was a stick break. He didn't lose his stick. But he got the whack on the stick and it snapped in his hand. He just dropped it. But tough break for Goudreau. 30 seconds to go in the Calgary power play. Here's Monaghan now. Got to find some room. Up high slot. Takes the drive. And that wrist shot. Deflected just wide. Think about Goudreau. When he enters into the zone, he's, he's got such patience. Hangs on to the puck. Holds it a bit longer than normal. And then makes sure he finds the right play to settle it down. Edler settles this down. Puts it towards the net. Did not reach the goal. It's... Penalty's just about over. Here's Hitler again. Back up high. Jansen's drive is into traffic and knocked down. And Hansen's been buzzing around tonight, and the penalty killers have done it again for the Canucks. One shot of that power play as the crowd here at Rogers Arena gives them a big hand. Dennis Weidman, lead feed up for Colburn. Into the corner. BX to Phil Bramlin coming. Gives him a shot. Here comes Henrik Sedin. Henrik steps in, puts it towards the net. Daniel back in there, and Orgio dives on the loose pocket and covers up. 
12.37 to go in the third period, and it's still 1-0 Calgary on Hockey Night in Canada. Here's a look at the Rookie of the Month of the National Hockey League for December, Johnny Goudreau. What makes him so good? He takes this puck, looks, 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 patience, spins off, and finds the right play that sets up this shot to the net with traffic in front. He has the poise of a veteran player, and right there, Richardson smacks the stick. Watch it. It is broken the bottom end. He's trying to handle it. He's trying to keep it going. It looked like one of those golf clubs that, that goes apart. When you make a perfect swing, it stays together. He had no choice but to drop it right at the top. He tried to play it with his feet, but he couldn't. Two goals in three games so far against the Canucks in his young career. This is fourth. Good face-off win there by Stanton. Pulls it back. Giordano sends it up the boards. Stanton steps up and kicks it ahead. And that one gets past Ryan Stanton. Then it goes down the ice. Stanton lost it on the board there. Got a break as Granlin could not pick that one up cleanly. Now it over the line. And then it's offside. And Burroughs and Higgins thought they were in. And Burroughs hates this call. Dennis Weidman, ever since he got the puck in the ankle, he had fallen down at the red line by the bench on the power play, and here he kind of loses his footing again. I don't know if that foot's bothering him. This flipped out puck kind of gets in his feet, and he just bambies right there. He goes down, Burroughs pokes it, but the thing is, does the puck cross the line prior to Burroughs crossing the line? And it's a tough call. The line's been sitting there right on it. It's not an easy one to make, but he's pretty sure of himself made the offside call. And the line that has accounted for 29% of the goals scored by the Canucks this season is back to work. The Sedin with Verbata. And they need one. Hammered in. Round the boards it goes. There's Wyman. Hit from behind there. Just jarred a bit by Henrik Sedin. And it's bounced back out to center. Edler with a pass. Taken by Verbata. Drops it off for Henrik Sedin. Bad pass back to Edler. Edler shoots, and that's blocked and corralled by Russell, who skates it away. Here's Russell, drops it off into the slot there for Mana, and his shot just misses. Far side, pass lag. Off to center ice. Bounces away from Vancouver. Swept over to T.J. Brody. Brody waiting for the Flames to complete their line change. Giordano pressured by Brad Richardson. Off to Gujo. Can't chip it past Pisa. And they'll start again. David Jones. Working against Corrado. Gives him a good bump along the end boards. They try to move it up the boards. And Richardson's there to help out. Open ice. Near side. Pisa. Corrado steps out. Goes across to Lucas Pisa. Who's at center. Here's Pisa now. Trying to drop it back from O'Kaz. It ends up in behind the net. Couple of Canucks back there. There's Cassian. Cassian being watched by David Jones. Rafael Diaz is in there as well. Richardson takes a look, moves it back to the line. Quickly across to Spisa. Around the edge he goes. Canucks can't penetrate. Quick pass up to Backlund. He's the game's lone goal scorer, and he's all alone right now. Foley quickly towards it, and that hit the base of the side of the goal. Chopped up, but not out by Matthias. Lucas Pisa backs it off, turned over, stage it with a drive, and a great stop by Lack. This kill the Canucks zone, and Lack bails out his mates on a good drive by Matt Stage, who scored twice last night. Past the midway point of the third period. Might have been from that same location. We got the turn off, turnover off Ekblad and just ripped one right from that same spot. Here's Dorset now. He centers one and it goes right past the goal mouth. Another try from the far side. Block off the stick of Corrado. And Lance Boma is slow to get up. Very slow. He's on one. He's lost his, his blade. Here's Yannick Hansen now. Hansen in behind the net. Boma has not lost his blade. He's lost his shot blocking guard and it's tripping him up. They're almost short handed here in their own end. Granlin. 
relieves the pressure, gets it out to center, and that allows Bowman to get to the bench. Well, sometimes the things just don't work out right with your equipment. A little malfunction here for Boma, who's had a couple of great blocks tonight, and he's gonna block this one, and when he blocks it, it takes the protective guard on the top of his laces off his skate, and they have had some issues with these things doing this, and now it gets under his feet as a poor reverse by Spiza ends up right onto the stick of the Calgary Flames and right out into the slot. You're not gonna get a better look at the net than that from that stage, and what a save by Eddie Locke. Only his 18th, but it was a good one. Chris Higgins dumps it in where it's met by Burroughs. Russell puts it up the boards. And back out to center, Tanev. Over to Kevin Bieksa. Up ahead to Higgins. Higgins. Stop Burroughs headed for the front of the goal. Couldn't get the puck to it. Now Burroughs trying to get away from Glenn Cross. Alex Burroughs on the backhand, and Ochil scores across to try to make the save and cover up, but he can't. Here's BX and Al. Gives Russell a bump. Nick Bonino out to Burroughs. His drive misses on the near side. Russell to center, dumps this one in. David Jones, one on two against the Canuck defenders. Here's Edler. Moves it up to Daniel City. Alex Edler back for Daniel. Henrik jumps on the loose puck. Backlund tries to lean into him. Here's Daniel. Pops over his stick and it's met near side by Alex Edler. Edler being watched by the crafty one, Johnny Goudreau. And he threw it across to Jones who was already headed to the bench for a line change. For Bata to Daniel Sedin. He'll peg it off the inboards, waiting for it as Henry back to the line as Corrado with a drive. And another stop by Yoni Ortio, who's now faced 33 shots, a career high for him. Yoni Ortio making a one goal lead stand up in Vancouver tonight. Well, the Sedins are they're getting up there in hockey years as they reach the 34 year old mark and still looking really good. They just know where each other is all the time. Watch him use the back of the net here, Henrik, and then out in front of the net it goes. They use their feet well, they get the puck in locations, they support each other all the time. And they've had some good looks at the net tonight, but they have not been able to find the back of it. And oftentimes when those guys aren't scoring, and the one they did score was a high stick, and Henrik he had his stick in the air and then he just skated to the bench. He knew right away that he had touched that puck. But they are a going concern for any team that plays against them. Daniel with 79 career points against Calgary. Henrik with 73. Come tonight. Yet, Mathias. Up for Cassie. Snaps a shot. And goes wide. Globe side past Orteo. Bouncing puck. And Goudreau's trying to race away. Black comes Willer with dead. Edler sweeps it off of the end boards. And that is turned over. Here's Goudreau. Tries to cut in. Backman with a shot. Lack with the save. Another sloppy turnover in Vancouver's zone, and Lack again shuts the door. Well, Cassian comes down wide, and he blows it wide of the net, and that thing comes all the way around, and that's how Calgary exited the zone and got into the end. And then he tries to bunt one into the middle of the ice to Richardson, and that doesn't make it. Goudreau jumps all over it and then drops this thing to Backlund, and he tries to go upstairs with it, but it kind of fluttered off his stick. An easy save for Lack. Seven minutes to go in regulation. Here's Hansen. Finds Dorsett on the move. Here's Dorsett cuts to the net. Orchio makes the save, and the rebound is pushed just outside the post. Good hard drive by Derek Dorsett. The XL one time. Wide of the mark. In behind the net, and out from behind it is now Horvat. He turns and shoots towards the goal, and Orchio, guarding that near post, makes another save. The speed of the game, and Dorsett will show you what kind of effect that can have as he comes blowing down the outside here, gets control of the puck, takes it wide, takes it on Weidman. They had a little bit of issues making the pivot and making the turn to keep up to the speed. Then once you see that little hop at the defenseman's feet, you know he's trying to catch up. Good job by Dorsett to drive in, and a good job by Orzio to hold his ground and not allow him to find any holes. Sedin's back out there. With Verbata, 
change that Willie Desjardins has made in this third period, and I'm sure it's to try to create any kind of production that they possibly can to get back in this hockey game. Stepping in now is Stajun. Stajun had a great chance moments ago, stopped by Lack. Up high, there's Brody. Rich shot attempt, deflected up and out of place. We send you back downstairs to Scott Oak. All right, Dave, on our Budweiser red light scoreboard, the Jets and the Kings tied at three now in the third period at Staples Center. Marion Gabrick with the tying goal. Rangers lead over San Jose, cut to 2 1 in the third earlier. Pittsburgh over Montreal in OT. Sidney Crosby had the winner, and the Senators won in Arizona, 5 1 the final there. Thank you, Scott, and of course, the score here 1 0 Calgary. The Flames 1 4 and 1 in their last six on the road. And steer this one home and bump a big slump against the Canucks. Here's Burroughs. Burroughs on the end boards, but back on in front, and that goes up and over the net. Met near side by Alex Edler, and he's going to back up. Crowd trying to get into it here on a Saturday night. Going to urge the Canucks, the home side, onto a goal here. They're one shot away from tying the game. Have been for a while. A lone goal coming in the 538 mark of the first period on Calgary's first shot of the game. Richardson into the corner for Zach Cassian. Cassian pokes it that puck, gets it back for Bieksa in towards the net, and it goes into the corner. Here's Visa, his drive, knocked out in front by Weidman. Here's Richardson now. Richardson back to the line. BX again quickly across to the visa. Loads, fires, blocked by Bowling. Great shot blocked there by the big guy. Here's Paul Byron. Byron at center just chips it in there, and the flames will change. Some nights the puck is like a magnet to you, and in the wrong way as Dennis Weidman has taken another one off the foot. Johnny Gutro drops it up for Giordano. Hits shot wide, glove side on lap. At center, puck bounces around. It's gathered up by Michael Backlund. Backlund shovels it in there to the corner. It goes out in front of the net, dangerously put back in there. And Edler forced into the corner by Backlund, and now he is hammered. Puck comes free up for Cassian. The crowd's getting a bit antsy. They have not had a power play tonight. The Vancouver Canucks, and probably a big part of that reason is the Calgary Flames just do not take penalties. Stepping in now is Lance Bowline before he can turn and shoot. Edler did a good job knocking that puck away from him. Here's Daniel Sedin to Hedrick. Hedrick spins back, finds the lead man. It's Edler, his drive, weak and harmlessly to a crowd in front of the net as a stick got in the shooting lane there. Calgary is blocking 11 shots in this period alone. Some on purpose, some not. <laughs> Here's Weidman going after that loose puck. Give it a shove there by Daniel, who goes hard into the corner against Chris Russell, who's the lead leader in shot blocks. Hops away from Corrado, who's going to turn and hustle back with Glenn Cross forcing him there. Three and a half minutes to go in Vancouver. 35 to 20 of the shots on net in favor of the Canucks. Cranley. Banks it in there, Lack out of his net to the exit, quickly up to Dorsett. Dorsett, who just got a strong drive, gets the center. Snaps that one in where it's met by Orchio. Into the corner, and ringed around by the Canucks. Here's Dorsett now, waiting for it is Horvat. Horvat trying to step out, drops it off for Cassie, and Cassie it back to Dorsett. Off the back of the net, and it's shot back into the corner where Steve has got a chance to make a play to open ice, and he does. Shoveled all the way down by Brody, and that is icing. Well, don't miss The Book of Negroes, the epic six-part miniseries starring Lou Gossett Jr. and Cuba Gooding Jr., and it continues Wednesday at 9 on CBC. Well, Calgary on the icing. They've got some tired guys out here, and Bob Hartley, I haven't seen him go to the timeout yet. And maybe he's not going to. He's comfortable. Maybe these guys are going to be okay, but they were out there for quite a while. 
before they threw that puck down the ice. Big face-off, and the Flames have been dominated in the face-off circle tonight. Daniel City tries to pick it off the end board, throws it out in front, and Backlund is there to break it up. Well, what, a, what a return Michael Backlund has had. After missing 29 games, he's there for Giordano. He shoots in lap square to the shooter. I don't know if it actually reached him. Back towards the goal, bouncing puck, and it's swept to the near side now. There's Backlund, back towards the net, and Edler's got it. Knocks running at a time here, two minutes to go. Oh, Canucks tired, they, they, they got control of the puck, but they had to make the line change, so Edler had to wait for fresh troops to get on. Sean Mathias in there against Wyman, digs it free, there's the shot, and it goes wide and bounces all the way down the ice. Oh, Willie Desjardins is going to tell his team post game here has hit the net. I mean, Burroughs walked in and missed one, and right there, Matthias hit the net. And they can't gain the zone, and now Canada's falling down. Here's Hoodler on the loose puck. Trying to get it in front to Glenn Cross, and Bieksa broke that up. That could have been the nail in the coffin. Good choice to go for Bieksa. Do you stay and play the middle of it, or do you rush the player with the puck? He decided to rush him, and it paid off. Chris Tanev. Circles back, Canucks complete a line change. With one minute to go. Zadine's back into the ice. Tanev goes after the loose puck, back and watching him. Off the skates and up from Edler. To Daniel, there goes Black to the bench. Extra attacker comes on, Frankie Corrado's out there. Alex Edler up on the play, feeds it down low and behind the net for Henrik. Henrik centers it out in front, Colbert is there, and the Flames get it out with the empty net. Boma trying to force his way up there, but Edler is back. Half a minute to go, quick lead feed up the center ice, where it's scooped up by Henrik. Sends it around the boards in the corner, waiting for it is Daniel Sedin. On the back end, Henrik Sedin out in front, bouncing puck, they bang away. Ortio is down, and he has got the puck. Rolling to keep it out as he's done all night is Yoni Ortio. And remember, Vancouver does not have a timeout. They took it on the icing call earlier in the hockey game. And great on end zone here as Benino lets this go to Sedin. He knows it's not meant for him. And then Sedin brings it right to the cage. And as this puck falls to the left of Ortio, Benino just cannot get his stick on it. And Bob Hartley is going to elect to drop this puck without calling a timeout. He's going to let this thing play itself out with 17.6 seconds. He doesn't want to give the Sedins any more of a rest than what they've had already. They've been double shifting the last five minutes. And they win the draw. Bouncing puck handle there by Bieksa. Into the corner. Daniel behind the goal with Benito in front. They've turned it over and they do keep it in. Daniel Sedin tries to chip it out in front, and Ortio has got that as well with 2.6 left on the clock. What a night. What a return to the NHL for Ortio. A bouncing puck that was going to be cleared from the end, and a soccer play by Kevin Bieksa to keep it alive, and it ended up getting right back to the Calgary net and a good quality scoring chance that they couldn't bury. And Go figure, they haven't been able to bury one of the 36 shots they've had on Yoni Ortio. And at this point, with 2.6 seconds, it looks pretty good. There's the soccer kickback to Verbata. And then the Sedins do their magic down low. And as it comes out in front, good job by Ortio to track it down. And we'll watch the clock and tick them down to see if they'll be adding any more time to this. I don't think they will be. This may be a push to the net or a quick one draw. And remember, they've won 70% of their draws tonight. Henrik Sedin directing traffic all around the face-off circle. Wants for Bata to step in a little closer. Edler's right behind him as well. Last chance here for the Canucks. They need a clean win. And they do not get it as time expires on the Calgary Flames. Snap a long losing streak against the Canucks. And they get a 1-0 shutout win on the back of Yoni Ortio. And look out! Tempers player after this one. The 
this is going to be between Alexandra Burroughs and Mark Giordano. And this comes after the play is completely over. And, and Burroughs just kind of went after him. I'm not sure if Giordano had done something to him or at the end of the play, but this one ends with players laying all over the ice and a lot of scrambling around the Calgary net, but congratulations to Yoni Orpio who traveled halfway across the world to get here. <laughs> what a shutout, 36 save shutout for Yoni Orpio. First of his career, fifth career win. Welcome back indeed to the National Hockey League as the Calgary Flames start their five game road trip with a win in Vancouver, a place they had not won since December of 2011. Here are your three stars. Well, Michael Backlund and what a Relief to have him back in their lineup. Another goal again tonight. He was solid. Eddie Lack only allowed the one goal, and really it was a tough one at that on the goal by Backlund. The game winner as Yoni Ortio made Michael Backlund's goal stand up as the Vancouver Canucks threw a lot at him, but they couldn't get one by him. They'll meet one more time on a Valentine's. One up is the final here. We'll take a break. Don't go anywhere. We got more action. The Jets and the Kings on the other side of this break.